This is your world. Fox Business Network's Ashley Webster is in New York City, and he's keeping track of all of it right now. Hey there, Ashley. Hey Good there, stuff. Trish. Well, I tell you, more than 125 companies, big and small in this country, and that number is growing, uh, have announced plans to either give a bonus or you know, hike the wages for their employers. Companies from American Airlines and JetBlue to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and just today, Waste Management saying they were going to hand out $2,000 bonuses to their 34,000 employees. And as you mentioned, Walmart is now joining the party. That's the country's largest private employer. More than one and a half million people work for Walmart in this country. They're going to raise their starting pay from $9 an hour to 11 bucks an hour. They're also going to hand out bonuses up to a thousand bucks. All of this after we find out that the corporate tax rate is coming down from 35 percent to 21 percent and those companies passing on their savings. But if you think the Democrats are impressed, they are not. In fact, they continue to say the big corporations are getting unfair tax advantages and they say don't be fooled by the peanuts that they're handing out to their workers. Just listen to House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. In terms of the bonus that corporate America received versus the crumbs that they are giving to workers to kind of put the schmooze on is so pathetic. It's so pathetic. Well, I'm not too sure, uh, Trish, whether those more than two million people who've been getting a bonus or a wage hike would say that's pathetic. Um, and it's, of course, let's not forget that all of this is in addition to the actual tax breaks that will show up in everyone's paycheck or many, many Americans' paychecks starting next month. So more money in people's pockets, more money in the economy. That normally means good times for all, Trish. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much. You heard Nancy Pelosi there, everyone. Crumbs? Crumbs, that's what she thinks an extra thousand dollars in everybody's pocket means for the average Walmart worker. Just crumbs? Come on. Heather Zumaraga finds that to be, well, kind of crummy, right? Kind yeah, of crummy. Yeah, Heather. right. I wish Pelosi would that? donate some of her own money. <laughs> that's hardly crummy to middle class Americans, maybe crummy to her. You know, it, <clears throat> unfortunately for Nancy Pelosi and for the Democratic Party that uh, she represents, I think that she has really lost touch with what it means to have to take care of a family and go out and work for a living. A thousand dollars to any of those Walmart workers, to anyone, is real money. And she's it, calling yeah. it crumbs. I mean, isn't this the problem itself with the party? They are supposed to represent the working class. They are supposed to care about middle class people and values. And yet they don't seem to want to help them in a way that's actually really meaningful. No, Trish, and you know what? Uh, not just the $1,000 bonus that some Walmart employees are going to get back, but also you look at single mothers in maternity leave. They're increasing the pay to 10 weeks from eight weeks. Corporations, over 125, are doing things like that, giving back to their greatest assets, their employees, because mm -hmm. of this tax cut, and they know how to best give back to their employees who service their customers way better than the government does, Trish. And this is an example of the free market economy working at its best when we are, the corporations are giving back to their employees. And we should point out the CEO of Walmart actually citing the tax plan, the GOP tax plan, and saying this is one of the reasons he's able to do this. I mean, isn't this the idea? You want to be able to free up money? I, I get it. I like shopping at Walmart. I mean, they got some really good <laughs> deals. And you know what? This makes me happy. I want people to be earning a good living. I want yeah. people to get these bonuses. I want them to have a better minimum wage. Sure, working at Walmart. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a cycle that goes around and around in that I think customers sure. are happier, workers are happier, and gosh, the economy is happier. It is, and the CEO Doug McMillan said it himself that this tax cut will allow Walmart to also increase competition uh, and be able to compete globally on a global scale. You look at the likes of Amazon that uh, they're facing increased competition with e-commerce, Trish. But this is really going to help all of Americans, this tax cut. And if the Democrats won't accept that now, they will when their paychecks come in February. I love this animation that we just showed the viewer there. All those companies. That's a a lot of businesses. Yes, yes, it's a lot of businesses. You know, we're already in better shape. I mean, we're growing an economy at better than 3%, which is a whole lot better than we were certainly over the last decade. So, Heather, how did, does this continue? I mean, one of the concerns, right, has been wages and that wages were not improving 
enough? I mean, they're barely keeping pace with inflation. Does that start to change? Wages are going to increase, and look, we haven't had to do it from a federal mandate. 18 states are increasing wages, but that may not be the best way to increase wages either. When you have companies that are increasing wages, only 2.7 percent of Americans actually receive minimum wage, and hopefully that's a stepping stone to something bigger, Trish. Yep. Unemployment rate is at 4.1 percent. That's going to put pressure on wages to tick higher as the supply and the job market uh, decreases. So this is a beautiful thing. GDP is at 3.2, 3.3% uh, and heading higher this, this year. So this is great, Trish. All right. I, I like a little good news. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather. Good to see you. you. Happy 2018. Well, Nancy Happy Pelosi isn't the only high-ranking Democrat slamming these tax cuts. Watch. This is Armageddon. Uh, this is a very big deal. They're telling us this is their Christmas present. It is a trillion and a half dollars that the Republicans gave away to billionaires and to giant corporations. Republicans will rue the day they pass this bill, and you can bet Democrats will make sure of that. <laughs> is he telling us that he doesn't want the economy to succeed with a comment like that. He doesn't want to see the Dow above 25,000. He doesn't want to see unemployment at a record low or wages going up. Are Democrats going to have a tough time defending those kind of statements come Election Day? Gary Kopham says they definitely will. Daniel McLaughlin disagrees. Gary, I mean, it, it, it's almost like they don't want us to do well. They don't want the American workers to succeed. They don't, they don't want to see success, economic success. I mean, you heard those comments. If I were the Republicans, I would play that loop uh, a million times over the next bunch of months. It pretty much speaks for itself. And, you know, I was watching uh, Brett Baer's interview with Elizabeth Warren yesterday talking about the giant giveaway to corporations. Well, I have news for Senator Warren. The giveaway is what corporations give to Washington, not the other way around. And the one thing that speaks volumes that the Republicans should talk about, not only what, what all these companies are doing here, but Tim Hortons in, in, in Canada has lowered uh, employee benefits because government came in and raised their costs and expenses, just the opposite. So there's a definite move afoot here. And if Republicans are smart, they would use this ammo going forward. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel, what do you think? I mean, you, you, you heard what they're saying, it, Armageddon. This is hardly Armageddon. This is good. This is good news for our for our economy. It Why is, don't they want to recognize that? Well, clearly part of this is political, right? Like they have opponents in 2018 and they want to make sure that they're getting their message across. I think that what the Democrats are saying is structural, structural matters. Corporate tax cuts never expire. Individual tax cuts do. One of the things that is part of this tax plan is the repeal of the individual mandate. So you might be getting a little bit more money in your wallet, probably not this year, but next year. No, 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 this year you will. In fact, the Treasury Department just came out and announced that today. In fact, uh, basically people will actually start getting more in their paychecks starting, starting on January, next okay. month. Which in is February. fantastic. So that is fantastic. I, I don't think the Democrats' talking points make any sense right now. And, and you say it's political. Well, everything one, they don't make sense. But two, you know, Can when it comes to su economic success, that's one time we, you shouldn't be political. I, I mean, you really shouldn't. Go ahead. You know, really, all I'm saying is health care is going to be a big part of this. If the individual mandate is unwound, there's 13 million people who make it out of health care. Individual premiums will rise. In insurers may get out of the market. And so we may be giving with one hand and taking with the other. I agree that, that from a political perspective, this is going to be a hard one to fight if people are doing well. We want people to do well. But this estate tax piece and the huge break that goes to corporate America when Apple has $250 billion offshore might bring 20, you know, a tenth of that back. Well, uh, Democrats, well, still want, <laughs> Democrats still want Democrats still care about I, I, It doesn't make any people. sense to me, Gary, that we have policies in place that make it most onerous to be doing business in the United States of America. You would think, given our free market capitalism principles that we were founded on, we would be the last country to be doing stuff like that. I mean, all we're trying to do here now is level the playing field so that American business can succeed and compete. What's wrong with that?
Uh, absolutely nothing. And, and let me be clear. It's not just what they are saying. It's not what Elizabeth Warren's saying or Schumer, it's Pelosi. It's what they did for eight years. It was They just believe in higher taxes, more rules, more regulations, more fees, more fines, more mandates, and more control by the government over our heads. We, they have shown it for eight years. They're mm -hmm. showing it now. The fact that they would use the word crumbs, the fact that they would put down something as absolutely nothing when people are benefiting it, benefiting not only from these bonuses, but also look what the market's doing, seven trillion of new wealth because of this. This is not by accident. This is on purpose. And I got to tell you, I don't believe what we're seeing. It's much uh, better than I even thought. And I was pretty much positive on it. Mm -hmm. They need to get their act together or else, uh, you know, the polls are saying Republicans not so good right now. I can guarantee you the poll numbers are going to go up for Republicans as mm -hmm. we get closer if this continues. Well, people vote their pocketbooks. They really do. Danielle, uh, is Nancy Pelosi running the risk of see seeming increasingly like the Marie Antoinette, if you would, of politics? In other words, she doesn't relate. She doesn't get it. She hasn't had to get it because she's grown up in a very privileged way and leads a very privileged life. And yet she's out there pretending to care about average people and saying things like a thousand bucks is nothing but crumbs. What she means is relative to what corporate America America is gaining from this tax plan that, Amer uh, that average Americans who are earning forty to fifty thousand dollars, whether you look at it by median or by average, are not getting the same kinds of benefits. So, she's been a champion of women of the working class for decades. She's been in, uh, in Congress for an extraordinary amount of time, de dedicated her life. And whether you like her or not, I think that the point is it's relative. It is corporate America gets an enormous amount, and individuals don't get so much. And to two of Gary's points, eighty percent of stocks in this country are held by twenty percent of people, and less than fifty percent, or around fifty percent of Americans, actually hold stocks. So. The use of the stock market, which is brilliant in many ways, certainly for institutional investors and others, it's not necessarily the best metric by which to, to measure how well Americans are doing. Yeah, well, you know, most Americans do have a 401k. And no, if you that work includes for a company 401k. Now, no, sure, sure. Uh, if you work for a company, it, it's required that, you know, automatically money goes into a 401k uh, unless you opt out of it. So a lot of people do actually have money invested in stocks via, via their job. Um, I guess the, the, the final concern here, though, is that, you know, ultimately what we want is everybody to be on the same page when it comes to the country succeeding. And it's disappointing and dis disheartening, really, to see the Democrats uh, try and downplay economic success. Unemployment, good to see you guys. Way down, stocks way up, not bad for the president's first year in office, but this is how Time Magazine sees it. We're on it. And Democrats like to say they're looking out for these dreamers by holding government funding hostage. But did Katie Pavlich just call their bluff? She's next. January 20th, Cofundo is live for two hours from the nation's capital. One year after the inauguration, Neil breaks down the president's accomplishments, agenda, and how it all impacts you. Starting January 20th, don't miss Cofundo live every Saturday on the Fox News Channel. The Good Lap Bill is a DACA solution. The Good Lap Bill brings peace of mind to the DACA kids, and it also shows here's what the security piece looks like. So that is constructive. The Good Lap Bill doesn't say don't help DACA kids, deport. It doesn't do that. It says here's one way to solve this problem. This is sort of like a, a little dance. Okay, Mr. Chairman, thanks for your bill. I really like it. It has no prospect for success. Zero. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi calling a bill that provides protection for dreamers and our borders a non-starter. And now Katie Pavlich is here, and she's calling her and other Democrats bluff. She says they're using these young people as political pawns. Katie, welcome. Good to see you. Wow. Glad you survived Mount Washington in the cold <laughs> weather. We got yeah. to see you back and thought out. That was the coldest place on Earth, yes, if indeed. you can imagine. Yeah. And, and I'm told it was actually 20 degrees warmer on the planet of Mars. Oh, so, man. hey, I know how to pick them yeah. when it comes to vacation spots. But it, it, walk us through why you think that they're using young people in this, in this yeah, very political so way. Democrats are all 
always uh, accusing Republicans of not just being bad on policy, but of being bad people. If you're not for DACA or comprehensive immigration reform, you're a bad person who doesn't have any empathy for people who are brought here uh, illegally by their parents. Now, if you look at what has been proposed by the White House and by Republicans in the legislation that was introduced yesterday, it's what the White House has, has wanted, a deal on DACA, which Democrats have claimed for a long time that they wanted. It's why Barack Obama did it through an executive fiat, even though he said he couldn't do it that way. He did it anyway, claiming it was for the good of the people. There's chain migration ending, diversity leader, uh, lottery program ending, and of course, the wall. The three pillars of, of that outside of DACA, Democrats have already voted for. Democrats in the Gang of Eight bill, already, you know, the Gang of Eight bill, bipartisan group of lawmakers, Republicans and Democrats, included an elimination of chain immigration and the visa lottery program. And if you go all the way back to 2006 for the Secure Fence Act, which Chuck Schumer voted for, it was just a kind of a watered down version of a wall. It's a fence, a wall, same thing, what Trump is asking for now, and yet Democrats are opposed because they want to continue to use the DACA issue against Republicans as a political hammer going into 2018. So it, it's, it's a wedge issue for them. So Absolutely. what ultimately happens then? Does anything get done, or do you think that they're going to just you know put, dig their heels in because they don't want to see him succeed on anything? We're seeing a little bit of movement on Capitol Hill now of Democrats maybe thinking that this is not the best uh, stand for them to take on DACA. It's a bipartisan issue that the majority of the country both left and right believe should be handled, should be handled in a way that allows them to stay. But the big fight, Trish, that nobody's actually talking about is the comprehensive part of this that comes afterwards. Because parents of DACA recipients, they're here illegally too. And the question is, do they get to stay? What are the protections? Some of the details of the Senate bill that's coming out uh, tonight or tomorrow show that DACA recipients' parents will not get permanent status, but they will again get protected uh, temporary status, which opens up the question again of where does this thing end? Well, and what does it mean for Donald Trump's base? I mean, they, they don't like the idea of providing any form of amnesty to people who came here illegally in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I know that we're skeptical of, of some of the polling, but according to some of the polling, his base actually is in favor of approving DACA. What they're not in favor of is approving it without any kind of border security in return, meaning the wall that Donald Trump so famously uh, campaigned on. Now, the president has, throughout, throughout the last 24 hours, made it crystal clear that he's not going to sign anything uh, that doesn't include the wall, but during that bipartisan mm -hmm. meeting, it wasn't so clear because he said, whatever you guys come up with, Democrats, Republicans, I will sign. And then he had to kind of walk it back and remind everybody that the wall is going to be part of that so legislation. It makes you wonder, is, was that... Is what he what he's doing right now sort of for public posturing? Whereas you know when we saw him in the room running that meeting, that's how the sausage gets made, and and maybe there's more negotiating that comes into play than we see right when he's on the public stage. Right. Well, calling the Democrats bluff on the DACA issue and shutting them down when they say that they only want a quote clean DACA bill, which means voting through DACA without any border security, is really them just setting up the country for a problem in the future. Of of having illegal immigration, because if you don't stop the problem now, it's just going to reoccur again, and Democrats see those people as future voters. Ah, so there is the Indeed. political pun. There it is. <laughs> All right. yes. Thank you so much, Katie. Good Pelletis. to see you. Good to see, see you soon. You. Happy 2018. Yeah, too. All right, should certain Medicaid recipients be required to work? For the first time, the White House is allowing states a pathway to make it work. Maine is one of them. Republican Governor Paula Page is here. And remember when time predicted a Trump meltdown before Election Day? Well, we know that didn't happen, so is it any wonder that this is how they're depicting him now? Mm-hmm. We're on it. The Trump administration has cleared the way for states to impose work requirements for those on Medicaid. Fox Business Network's Blake Berman is at the White House with more on this story. Hi, Blake. Hi there, Trish, and this is now up to 11 states who have expressed interest with South Carolina being the very latest. The center. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services making this announcement earlier today, essentially allowing states to test what amounts to a work requirement. Two conditions for if you want to receive Medicaid in those states should they opt in. First, you need to work. Or second, you need to be involved in what is described as a community engagement activity. Falling underneath that umbrella is the following, whether you're in skills training, possibly if you're in school, partaking in a job search, caring for someone else, or volunteering. CMS does say there would be exemptions, including for the disabled, the elderly, children, and pregnant women. In a tweet today, the CMS director, Seema Verma, defended the policy by writing, quote, 
We need to support states and give them more freedom to designate to design rather innovative programs that get positive results for Medicaid beneficiary. However, critics say this goes way too far. I asked the White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders earlier today about one of those criticisms. Critics would say you need to be healthy to get a job in the first place. How are they wrong? Uh, look, certainly we want the American workforce to be healthy, and we're focused on helping improve health care across the board. But we also want people to have jobs. We're working on both of those things simultaneously. I don't see how that uh, conflates with one another. Trish, roughly 70 million Americans, that is one in five Americans just about, are dependent or at least receive, med, uh, receive uh, Medicaid. Legal challenges, no doubt about this one, Trish, are sure to follow. Oh, indeed. All right. Thank you so much, Blake Berman. Well, 11 states are seeking work requirements for Medicaid recipients, including Maine. Is this the right move? Well, let's ask. Maine Governor, Governor Paul LePage. Governor, good to see you. Welcome. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking to have me on. And I will tell you, is it a, is it a good thing? It is. We have done it with TANF in Maine, and it's been a resounding success. And what it really does, and what, what the, the uh, opponents should look at, is it takes away isolation, it creates new relationships, it, it improves a quality of life, it helps the labor force, and most of all, it, 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 it transitions them to a path to go towards uh, commercial insurance and other forms of employer-sponsored insurance. So mm -hmm. it is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let me ask you about sort of, you know, more specific situations. You saw that some people could get an exemption. Uh, Blake Berman, our reporter, put a, a list of examples up, and one of, it, one of the examples was if you were caring for someone. So would that include, say, a single mother who maybe has four little ones, you know, all under the age of five, that you know she can't get out to a job for because she would have to find someone to care for her children. Uh, would that be included, for example, in Maine? Yes, it would be. In matter of fact, so that, be okay. that is she one of the classes of. Yeah, that's the class we want okay. to protect. I strongly believe that a very strong safety net for our children, our elderly, our disabled is very, very important. And those with intellectual disabilities also have to be protected. So I am a firm believer that those people need to be protected. So if those you're protecting those that need to go protected, to I mean, that's, that's good. Why, why is there such a, an anger about this out there, in your view? Governor? I have no idea. In my view, it used to be when I was growing up, uh, you you worked hard, keep your nose clean, and you're successful, and and you'd be uh, you'd be a success, and everybody would look up to you. Uh, the, the new society we live in, they want you to be dependent on government, and if you're dependent enough on government, you will vote for those who support you, and it really doesn't work that way. And we're proving it in Maine mm -hmm. that we are changing, reforming our welfare, and we're gaining um, appreciation by our populace. Well, I, the goal should be to to make everyone as self-sufficient as they can possibly be, right, Governor? I mean, that's that's our F government financial should be helping to make them independent. Absolutely. A and we if you be, create a system, should, uh, sorry, go, go ahead. We've got a little bit of a delay that I think is, is I, affecting I believe us. financial independence, financial independence is so, so important for all families, and all families love it. And I can recite your stories and, and of, of actual things that have happened in the state of Maine where back in 2011 I was very unpopular for trying to put people to work. Now I'm getting letters saying thank you, thank you, thank you. We are now independent. We are doing well. I have a nurse who is an RN now who is just ecstatic, never thought she could get there on her own. A little nudge, and now she's so proud of herself. Oh, that's great. It's going to make you feel really good um, because that's, you know, look, if you can enable people 
and help them to help themselves, then you've, you've really achieved something. I think that uh, is, is, is very uh, commendable indeed, sir. Um, in terms of what, what's happening nationally, it, there's been a lot of talk of entitlement reform, you know, cutting back on some of the, the federal welfare programs. It, given what you've seen succeed in Maine, and I, I know Maine very well, I'm from New Hampshire and have spent a lot of time know, in your state, sir. Uh, but, you know, Maine's a small place, well, large territorial uh, wise, but it, it's got a small enough population. Do you think, though, what you That's have correct. done in Maine could succeed on a national level uh, absolutely believe it can and I and I think it will I think it's just a matter of transitioning from uh, one culture to another to a culture that's not too far in the past and it really worked very well it made us who we are today so it's not reinventing the wheel we're just going back to the basics just like education you know you get to learn to read write and do math and that's really the basics mm -hmm. and and having self um, you know, self-respect for yourself uh, and, and being financially independent and having the courage and, the, and to go out and okay. uh, do That's things great. on your own is really the American way. Governor, it is good to see you. I'm all for uh, what you're doing. I think the value of hard work is something that uh, we do need to keep teaching. Good to see you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank we'll you be, so much. We'll be right back. Walmart announcing cash bonuses and wage hikes today. Just another example of American workers benefiting from corporate tax cuts almost instantly. But has this changed the Democrats' view of tax cuts? We're asking Democratic Congressman from California, Brad Sherman. Good to see you, sir. Trish, thanks for having me on to talk about this deficit exploding job or outsourcing uh, economic disaster for our country. <laughs> You're being fair and balanced. When Tucker had me on to talk about nonsense, he promised that he would have me on once the tax bill was published. But he's been a coward wow. every single oh, time dear. because he knows um, he cannot defend this yeah, tax bill. Yeah, that's not fair. Hey, that's come on now. That's not fair. I, I well, and you know what? You're fair? here on this show right now with me, and we're going right. to talk about all this because you think. Uh, it's going to be painful for the deficit, uh, et cetera. It's funny how these talking points have kind of reversed, right? Because I, mm -hmm. I seem to recall that was a conservative talking point. But have at it, sir. What is your biggest concern right now, especially when you look at Dow 25,000, GDP growth better than 3%, unemployment at record lows, and wages now increasing thanks to hundreds of companies giving out wage increases? There are some small wage increases. In some extent, these wage increases are just to match minimum wage statutes that have been passed in Democratic states. Walmart says they're raising to $11 an hour. We require that in California. And then they can say, well, it's because we love the Republicans. No, it's because California requires it. If you, you know look that at tax Walmart's policies, actually given out bonuses to the tune of a grant, right? It, it, something that Nancy Pelosi calls just crumbs. Um, well, but if you look at the economy money, at the whole, with, hundred, with well over 100 million employees, the fact that a few companies are giving a few bonuses doesn't disguise the fact that when we have Democratic tax policies in force, we have much higher economic growth rates than we have when we have Republican economic policies and tax policies in Really? Force. I mean, because, you know, the last, uh, what, eight years under President Obama, that didn't turn out so well. You had no, average growth of one and a half percent. Uh, it should have been a whole that's lot better, but we had you, no economic policy out of I'm the talking, Obama administration. I mean, Trish, you've got to look at what tax law is in force, not who's sitting in the White House. Mm. It took several years for Obama to change his tax policies. Mm -hmm. We've had Democratic tax policies with almost two and two thirds percent economic growth. Compare that to the low economic growth we had under George W. Bush's mm -hmm. tax policies. Right. Look at Reagan's and look at Clinton's economic uh, when their tax law Clinton was Clinton benefited from the tech boom. Law. You know that, what? Congressman. Clinton benefited from the tech boom. There was a actual structural shift in our economy at that point in time. And we you know what? He wasn't able to sustain it. economy at all times, and Clinton promoted that tech boom. Congressman, I guess I'm remains. just troubled you by... You can look at no, all no, no, the... No, 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 no. You know what? Go, go, go read an economics 101 textbook. You can actually chart this stuff out. When you put more money in the hands of people and more money in the hands of corporations, the people and the corporations that are actually earning it in the first place, that 
equals the last growth. 30 years of history proves you wrong. No, no, when no, we no, had no, 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 Republican no. tax policies in force, we had lower Look economic growth. Look at what happened growth. with President Reagan. Because you, you run that huge deficit. You think you're putting more money in the hands of people, but then the federal government goes into the capital pool and takes the money mm -hmm. out. We're going to be borrowing $1.7 trillion. That's taking money out of the economy, out you, of where it's available for factual expansion. Where are you going to get the growth? Where are you going to get the economic growth, sir? We had higher economic growth in 2016 in terms of jobs than 2017. But after we passed Obamacare, after we passed mm -hmm. Dodd-Frank, we suddenly had two million or more, almost three million in one case, you. new jobs every year. It, now it that's tailed off a little bit I mean, Trump, about and it'll tail off more. Uh, this from someone who's fiscally conservative, as you just suggested. You're so concerned about the deficit, yet you want more entitlement programs. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm not here to. Uh, did I say I was for more entitlement programs? I'm here to preserve Medicare and Social Security. Ah, you you uh, want more Obamacare? I mean, the, you're, you're telling me that Obamacare had, was good no. for the economy. Obamacare correlated with a great increase in the number of jobs created each year. We were told it was a job killer, mm. but we had far more jobs created each year well, after it was that, adopted. I think than those before. numbers, sir, can be disputed. I guess I just want to you go back to what's happening right now. What's happening right now? You can right have alternative facts if you want, but Do if you, you look at the, like the official statistics of this country, you will. Uh, and, 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 what? It, it, let's gonna, get, let's go ask through the about list. Here and now, okay? Here and now. Do here you not and like now, what you we see? created only two million jobs last year. We created two uh, and a quarter million jobs the year before. After we adopted Obamacare and Dodd Frank, we mm -hmm. created over two million jobs the I'm year before. About only the one news million jobs. Today, Those are the real facts, no, not no, the no, alternative no. facts. The news today. The news that Walmart the news is giving out bonuses. Is that the Walmart news that is Walmart is closing 63 Sam's Clubs, and they didn't put that in their press release. Uh -huh. Well, you don't want to talk about the 63 Sam's Clubs and the thousands no, 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 of people no, 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 losing their jobs. Businesses close all the time because you're and not going to keep a store are given open all the in time. a community That's why we have a where Christmas it is and a not New Year's. prosperous to keep it open. That's I, I, the I guess point. I'm just amazed by Bonuses how you guys are given all the fight time. Close opens, opens all the time. Close opens all the time. You can't attribute it <laughs> to a tax bill. It's almost as though I fear some members of your party do not want to see this economy succeed because if this economy succeeds, people will credit Donald Trump with that. We and you want don't want it to that succeed. Happening. That's why we're there fighting to preserve Social Security and Medicare. That's why we're there trying to make sure that we don't deport Nobody's millions taking away and Social millions Security. of people. That's why we're there not wanting the federal government to close down and the economic problems that would have. We're working mm -hmm. to improve the economy every day. And uh, if the America succeeds, everybody succeeds. But you look at this tax bill, Here's what it does for factories. You can have a 0% tax on the profits of your factory only if you move it overseas. That's the offshoring provision of this bill. Mm -hmm. Not only does it provide 85% of its benefits to top 1%, it provides a 100% tax break for those who move their factories overseas. Those are the facts. You can make up alternative facts if you want. There's $2.7 trillion sitting overseas, possibly more. There is now an opportunity to bring all that money back on shore right. so that it's working for us. And we, we could have done policies, that with Democratic sir, policies that make us as well. Competitive. competitive because it is a competitive world out there, and America should lead the way on this. You know that. You we are competitive that. because we have the best workers and the best entrepreneurs. We do now. We're competing for but who you can give the most money to the top 1%. You want to stifle that work ethic by taxing people more and more and more to, you know, cover this your concerns about your sudden concerns and recent concerns about that. Unfortunately, I am out of time. I got a hard commercial break. I've coming been on, fighting for a balanced budget for a lot of years. I was part of the first balanced you. budget we adopted in I, the 90s. I appreciate hearing your side. Thank you very much. Okay, we're I taking wonder a quick if break. Tucker has the courage right to do back. the same. I might have caught that interview I just had with Congressman Sherman from California, who uh, is a Democrat and doesn't like this tax plan one single bit. For some reason, there are a lot of Democrats right now that have suddenly turned into what I would call fiscal conservatives. 
Amazing how that works, right? Fox Business's Charlie Gasparino is joining me right now with more. And, and Charlie, it's almost as though uh, it, you know, this has become so politicized that there are Democrats out there that do not want to accept or believe the economy or the markets are doing what they're doing because that would mean they would have to actually credit this administration with something and they uh, are clearly not willing to do it. You know, they sound like a bunch of Scrooges. I mean, you know, when you were, I mean, the guy brings up, oh, they give these bonuses all the time. When was the last time you heard of a rash of bonuses going back to, to workers from companies that are going to get a tax cut? I mean, I haven't heard that in a long time. Uh, certainly, it didn't really happen on the, during the Obama years. You could barely get it. There, were no, there was no wage growth during the Obama years. Um, where this tax plan has issues and where it has real issues, those are fake, phony, liberal sort of picayune things that he's pointing out because he doesn't want to believe that if you lower the corporate tax rate that it will create jobs and people will um, people will benefit where this where this thing has issues is in some of the details that are a little messy here and there yes you and I have spoken about how there's a huge tax break for private equity mm -hmm. where and we've also spoken about how some middle like upper middle class people mm -hmm. in certain states are going to get screwed and that'll mm -hmm. have a, that'll be a problem for the economy those are two real issues issues here but, but, Charlie, but it's they're not, not bringing this. those up it's I like it, it, we could have given them their talking points and they actually could have had some substance to them but instead I, they're going with this uh, oh you know the right. rich are benefiting and and the middle class is 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 right. you know getting it's, getting it stuck to and, and, That's and it's not really, the case. it's really absurd because rich people or upper middle class people are getting screwed here in a lot of states uh, and, and and average people working class people are getting a tax cut you know albeit a small one but they're getting mm -hmm. one so their their like talking they, points are all over the place. They fundamentally don't understand it. They really don't. When they start telling yeah. us, you know, well, gosh, you know, the the middle class, they're not getting enough of a tax break, and look at the wealthy. To which I, I say, gosh, you know, if you look percentage wise at who's getting the majority right. of the tax cut, it actually is going to the middle class. Well, it's not it's, going to the high earners. Well, and maybe it should, by the way, go to the high the, earners the, because they're paying most of the tax. I, I agree with that, and that's one of the problems with this because that's stimulative. When you give people pay taxes more of their money back, they actually spend it on working class people. My dad, a bartender, explained that to me when I was a kid. But here's where most of the tax cuts are going. They're going to corporations. I happen to think that's good. But but let's be real clear here. That's where it's going. And I think bringing our corporate tax rate down to a level that's you know on par with Ireland, which is taking jobs from the U.S., not the other way around, as it was in the old days, is you're a good taking, thing. You're, you're, well, you're talking about making it really though that low then, because Ireland's 12 percent. But you know, oh, I hear true. you. We got to compete. I got to leave yeah. it there, Charlie. But we must compete. Absolutely, positively. Thank you, Charlie Gasparino. Okay. Uh, the president causing a scramble with one tweet about FISA the surveillance this morning, but the White House says it's much ado about nothing. We're on that for you. His tweet today was confusing. It was contradictory. It just was. So how are people supposed to trust, not us as reporters, but lawmakers, stakeholders, policymakers, that the people representing the president's position actually are? Um, I think that the premise of your question is completely ridiculous and shows the lack of knowledge that you have on this process. The House today passing legislation to renew a key foreign surveillance program. But much of the attention seemed to be on one of the president's tweets on the matter. Mike Emanuel is in Washington. He has more on that. Hey, Mike. Well, hi, Trish. Yeah, there was definitely some confusion after some conflicting tweets were sent by President Trump this morning about that intelligence tool that led to a conversation between House Speaker Paul Ryan and the president. The subject was the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, and then the bill passed the House. At the White House today, Sarah Sanders rejected any suggestion that the president was confused about what was up for a vote. She says the president is pleased that the vote passed in the House, but he does have some overall concerns with the FISA program. She says it's top of the mind for the president, and he has a full understanding. There is still work ahead, though, as it heads to the Senate. The Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is planning a procedural vote early next week. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is threatening a filibuster out of privacy concerns. Trish? Thank you so much, Mike Emanuel. Well, the media's obsession with the president's daily tweets may be behind this cover in Time magazine. It shows the president with his hair on fire and the line, you're one. But does that give media carte blanche to ignore the president's achievements? With me right now, The Hill's Judy Kurtz. Judy, good to see you. Great to see you as well, Trish. <laughs> That's quite a cover. 
It is quite a cover. And you know, I'm not ancient, but by any means, any stretch of the imagination, it's hard to imagine any other president in modern history being treated like this, ridiculed in this way, like that Time magazine cover. Yeah, you know, it, I think about Ronald Reagan and how he was treated. That's probably the closest to it because, you know, this is pre your time, I'm sure, but I can remember being a kid and how they treated Reagan and they said he was crazy and he had dementia and this and that and the other. He was just an actor. And it's similar to now, but now is that much worse. I mean, this is Time magazine, let's not forget. Time magazine that really seems to have it out for him in a way that, you know, I, I don't know why this is. Do you, I mean, aside from, yeah, you know, some of the tweets are a little explosive, et cetera, but there's a vitriol, I think, in the media right now that we haven't seen ever before. Any idea why? Well, you, as you mentioned, Time Magazine and President Trump certainly have a history together. Uh, a lot of their coverage, their covers, I should say, do seem to go negative. And President Trump is certainly an unusual president. And sometimes he does invite this kind of coverage with provocative tweets, uh, provocative moves. But at the same time, while a lot of journalists are fair, uh, study after study has shown that the coverage of President